This is Israel. This is the Jordan River. Not just the Jordan River, this is the exact spot that Joshua walked through and the waters parted. This is the exact spot where uh, Eli Elijah uh, took his, uh, his rope, his mantle, and he hit this water and walked through. You know where he was walking to? On the other side, he picked up a chariot to heaven. This is the exact spot where that same mantle Elisha grabbed and came back across as if it was dry land. And this is the exact spot where Jesus himself was baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. And this is the exact spot that you are going to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire. I'm here with Pastor Todd Smith on location in Israel, and I have to tell you something, Todd. I, I'm reminded of something in the Bible. Can anything good come out of Dawsonville, Georgia, that tiny little, how big is that town? Our whole city's 3,500 people. Our entire county <laughs> is only 23,000. 3,500. And how many come to your church of 3,500 people? You're on a baptismal night, it can be up to 2,000 people. Yes. That, that's equivalent to almost two-thirds of the population. Uh, why are they coming to this? They are coming to our church, Sid, because I had a vision uh, in January of 2018 that as I'm walking across the stage and I see our baptistry, I'm just in a moment of prayer, just walking across the stage, nothing unusual. We're in a time of fasting with our church and I look at our baptistry and I see the baptistry completely empty in the natural, but in the spirit I had my first open vision and I see the tank full of water and a strip of fire on the water. And the Lord spoke to me, I'm gonna baptize people with Holy Spirit fire. Ever since then, we've been baptizing people. After revival hit our church, we started baptizing people and they're encountering the fire of God in that water. Uh, speaking of the fire of God, um, I want to take Todd back. Uh, before you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the fire of God, what was your thinking about such things as that? Well, I was raised Southern Baptist, and I thank God for my heritage. I was saved as a Southern Baptist, schooled as a Southern Baptist, started pastoring a church that was a Southern Baptist church. So I was not completely open to the baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire and even the gifts of the Spirit. I wasn't even open to them. I was more of a sensationist, a staunch dispensationalist, if you will. Uh, but you developed such a God hunger inside of you uh, that led to people praying for you. And tell me about that yes. for the fire. Oh, yes. And so, Sid, I would start reading the Bible. And uh, not that I didn't before, but I was reading the Bible and I started seeing things in the Word of God miracles and signs and wonders, how demons were being cast out, how the lame were walking, the deaf were hearing, and the blind were seeing. What do you mean you start seeing that? You've been reading the Bible yes. for years and years. Well, I just, I thought that was for, uh, uh, dedicated to that particular season, you know, when so the you apostles. So you kind of almost went over it. That's old, yes. old I, time. Yes, I skimmed over it and said, that's not for us today. That was for them. And so, I, but I started reading the Bible and I got hungry. I said, God, what you did for people Peter, James, and John, why isn't that happening in my ministry? Why isn't that happening in my life? Now, mind you, I was pastoring one of the fastest growing churches in the state of Georgia, Southern Baptist Church. We were seeing tons and tons of people getting saved. We were adding a brand new sanctuary to accommodate the growth. But in my heart, I hungered for more of God. I said, there has to be more. But I would read the Bible and said, I want what they had. But here's what happened. I took my denominational glasses off, Sid, and I said, Lord, I want to read the Bible as if I just got saved. Because I was reading the Bible with these Baptist lenses on. And now these, mm -hmm. these, these lenses that I, that I was reading the Bible through, uh, 
cost me a lot of money. <laughs> Private education, you know, seminary education, and everybody in my family and all my friends had matching lenses, matching glasses. <laughs> but I got so hungry for God and I said, God, I want to know what your word says. Mm -hmm. So uh, that, take me a long story short, you had a group of pastors lay hands on you. Mm -hmm. What happened when they did that? It's something very interesting happened. You know, a Baptist went to a Pentecostal prayer meeting and, and that was scary enough for me because I, I had never understand. been to that. So I'm sitting there and I said, fellas, I'm ready to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And they walked around me, prayed and said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. They laid hands on me and said, my throat tightened. I got, there's a constriction around my throat. And I stopped the gentleman and I said, listen, my throat is hard for me to swallow. It's hard for me to swallow. One gentleman said, well, Todd, here's what's going on. There's a prayer language that God wants to release through you, but it's being constricted. He says, I want you to denounce all false teaching. I want you to repent of teaching false teaching. And as soon as I did, I said, Lord, I'm sorry for believing false doctrine. I'm sorry for teaching false doctrine. Immediately my throat loosened. It relaxed and, and he, put, he put one index finger on my forehead and he said, be filled with the Holy Spirit. And at that very moment, at that very moment, the power of God came upon me, the kavod, the glory of the Lord sat upon me and I fell backwards and began to speak in other tongues. The Bible talks about Holy Spirit and fire. Mm -hmm. What is the fire like? I believe that the fire of God is the power, the unction of the Lord. An unction not only to do the works of Jesus, but also an unction and a power and fire to walk in purity and righteousness and holiness before the Lord. Because before that, I was striving to be holy. I was striving to be pure. But when the Holy Spirit came upon me, it was another element. It was, another, it was like energize me. It was the fuel to allow me to resist sin and also to walk in an authority I had never walked in before. You think his misconception on the baptism of the Holy Spirit was major. He found another misconception when he took those denominational classes off that most Christians suffer from that'll totally transform your life. It will. We'll be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. I'm here with Pastor Todd Smith on location right by the Jordan River, uh, the exact spot where historically we're told Jesus was baptized. You can't get much better than that, Todd. Yes. Okay, I said it was the biggest misconception. I believe this, is, this misconception is so bad that it has stopped you fulfilling your destiny and caused you to even question God when prayers were not answered. Explain that misconception. Well, I believe a lot of us are living our lives contrary to Scripture. And I believe because of the hyper grace message that it doesn't matter what, how what we live. What do you live. mean by hyper grace? That it really doesn't matter how we live now. God accepts us just as we are. And there is an element of truth to that, that God does accept us just right. the way that but we are. But truth out of proportion. Exactly. We're not talking about purity. We're not talking about righteousness from the pulpits. We're not talking about holy living. We're not talking about abstaining from uh, evil in our lives. We've opened up the church doors and embraced everything. And so the church has filled our, our corridors and our hallways and the sanctuaries with a soft gospel. That it's a gospel of accommodation. It's well, a, wait, 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 you can't have a mega church without that. Well, we become more <laughs> seeker sensitive then we have Holy Spirit sensitive. We, we don't want to offend anybody. We don't want to deal with the tough issues. We don't want to deal with personal If holiness. we don't, who will? The politicians? Give me a break. Yeah. So <laughs> therefore, it's very difficult to find in the culture, Christian and unchristian. We just mingle these together. I want to take you back to uh, that misconception uh, that we'll call 
they don't know Jesus sat down. Yeah. What happens when people really capture this in their lives? You know, in the book I wrote, He Sat Down, I'm reading the scripture, Mark chapter 16, where Jesus says to his disciples, here's what I need you to do. Uh, you're going to take the gospel to the world. You're going to cast out devils. You're going to lay hands on the sick. You're going to you're going to speak in new tongues. And if anything, you, you drink any deadly thing, it's not going to hurt you. And then I read verse 19 where it says, and he ascended to heaven and he sat down. The Lord spoke to me and he said, Todd, read that again. I said, Lord, you ascended to heaven and you sat down. He said, read it again. And he said, ascended to heaven and he sat down. He said, Todd, what am I doing right now? And I said, Lord, according to this, you are seated. You're sitting down. And he says, exactly. He says, I am still sitting. And it dawned on me that right now Jesus is in heaven. He is sitting. And that means he has completed all of the work that he's going to do on the earth in his flesh and bone body. And he said, Todd, what I now do on the earth, I do through my body. Everything, really 98 to 99 percent of all that God accomplishes on the earth, he does through his local body. Me, you, all of our viewing audience, what he accomplishes on the earth, he does through us. And if we don't do what he's asked us to do, his work doesn't get done. So many people uh, misunderstand that. We're here on location at the Jordan River. And when we come back, we're going to show you footage of people on our tour group because what happens, what the, the special presence that uh, Pastor Todd has hits wherever people are being baptized, I, the fire comes. I personally have talked to people that have been baptized when he's done this. I mean, people with absolutely incurable diseases with, I might add, why do you go to such lengths to get things documented before you release things about major miracles? Why do you do that? Because we know that the world is, is skeptical about when we say something that's happened, that God did something. We want to medically document it so that we can prove to the world that Jesus still heals. I mean, but this is actually ridiculous. 50 malignant stage four tumors in a PET scan I saw before my very eyes. And then she gets water baptized and the next day takes a PET scan. And I saw before my very eyes, all 50 tumors. Where'd they go, Todd? <laughs> the Lord took them completely out of her body. What happens when that fire hits the Jordan River at the exact spot Jesus was baptized in? Call now and get Todd Smith's anointed book, He Sat Down, and his powerful three-part audio CD series, Baptized in Holy Spirit Power. Plus, as long as supplies last, receive this prayer cloth soaked in the baptism waters of the North Georgia Revival. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9622. Through Todd Smith's powerful book, He Sat Down, you will be activated to do the greater works of Jesus. Clearly understand that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father so that He can empower you to walk in the supernatural every day. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit to demonstrate God's kingdom to others. Receive an impartation of the fire of God and obtain your miracle. You will also receive Todd Smith's exclusive and anointed three-part audio CD teaching series, Baptized in Holy Spirit Power. This audio CD set is filled with testimonies that will encourage you to believe that what God did for one person, He will do for you. Learn how to experience the glory of God. Begin to walk in God's supernatural power. Discover how personal revival can be yours. Learn how to be baptized in Holy Spirit power. Todd prays powerful prayers over you to encounter God for yourself. My life was changed when I experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and I'm going to share with people the importance of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the power to do the works of Jesus. Plus, you will receive this anointed prayer cloth, which was soaked in the baptism waters of the North Georgia Revival. The anointing, the healing and freedom that is in the water is transferable to this cloth and will help you receive your breakthrough. Jesus himself is going to operate through you 
He's going to do signs and wonders through you that are unimaginable. Don't miss out on getting Todd Smith's anointed book, He Sat Down, and his powerful three-part audio CD series, Baptized in Holy Spirit Power. Plus, as long as supplies last, receive this prayer cloth soaked in the baptism waters of the North Georgia Revival. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9622. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth, It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9622 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. A great, great miracle occurs wherever Todd prays or wherever Todd especially is near water. Do you remember when I said to you, uh, because I was observing what was happening at your church, how would you like to baptize people in the Jordan River? What went on inside of you? It just exploded because I know this is the exact spot where Jesus was baptized and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. The heavens opened and the Holy Spirit descended upon him. But if people aren't here when you do it, will that fire and glory and miracle working power hit them at home when you pray? Absolutely. 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 I mean, you go to church. It's not just his church. It's not just the Jordan River. It's God it has such a passion for you to fulfill your destiny. And that's what I really, they need your prayer to fulfill their destiny. But to whet our appetite uh, with so many major miracles that are going on at your church, what is your all time favorite, if I forced it to it, of miracles you've seen recently? Sid, we have this stack high I of know, miracles. I know, tell me one. That is very <laughs> difficult. It happened recently. Yes. A pastor out of Louisiana, I just call his first name Larry, he comes to our church. He heard what God was doing. The fire of God is falling. The fire is in the water. People are getting touched by the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit. He comes and he has the lower 12 inches of his back, lower 12 inches of his back, he has no cartilage. For seven years, he's taking hydrocodone, the highest dosage a person can handle per day. That's for pain. For pain, just tolerance. He comes to our church. He hears that the fire of God is in the water, the presence of the Lord. He gets baptized and he drives 10 hours home back to Louisiana and he realizes I have no back pain. He gets up the next morning and his habit is to take a pill so he can get out of bed. He says, honey, I'm not gonna take any pain pill medicine today. And he gets up and he realizes there's no pain in his back. Wait, that's impossible with all that spine missing. All of it, oh, the is cartilage is not, it's bone upon cartilage. bone. Cartilage. And, and, and he gets up and he says, honey, I have zero pain. And what God did in his life for the last five weeks since he's been baptized, at that moment, he has had zero pain. And the beautiful thing, Sid, he has no withdrawal symptoms from taking five pills a day of hydrocodone for seven years. No withdrawal symptoms. Jesus completely healed his back. I'm, I'm going to tell you something. That is normal. That is what God wants you to be doing. But before I release Todd to pray for you. I want to pray a prayer that you have your own experiential knowledge of God, because whether you know it or not, Jesus said, this is eternal life. And in the original language of the New Testament Greek, it says that you might have your own experiential knowledge with God. And so few of you have had that. Say this prayer to the best of your ability. Believe it out loud. Very important right now. I, I don't want anyone to keep their mouth like this. This is it. This is what you've always wanted. This is what you were created for. Repeat after me out loud. Dear Jesus, say it out loud. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner against you and you alone if I sinned. And I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus washes away all of my sins. And I'm clean. 
so good to feel clean. And now that I'm clean, I boldly proclaim, Jesus, you're my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, come inside of me. Take over my life. I make you Lord of my life. I want you now to see a little bit of what just happened in the Jordan River. Father, we love you. Yes. Thank you for what you're going to do here at the Jordan River, the very place where you, your son, Jesus, our Savior, was baptized. He set the example for us for immersion. I thank you, Lord, that we're going to be cleansed. We're going to be purified. We're going to be healed emotionally, physically. Lord, you're going to heal fractures in our souls today, that you're going to purify us. We expect the very same thing to happen to you, to happen to us, the Holy Spirit descending upon us. We thank you that you're going to baptize us with Holy Spirit fire. Yes. Fire. Yes. Fire. Yes. In these waters right here, Father. The same thing you're doing in Dawsonville, Georgia, you're going to do right here in Israel, in the Jordan River. We rejoice and bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Todd, they don't need to be in Israel for the fire to hit. Although this is the best place I know to get the fire of God. But pray right now for the people at home. And I want the same fire that hit Jesus, that hit Todd, that hit me, to hit you. Right now, whatever's going on in your body, I believe that Jesus wants to heal you. He wants to touch you. And as Sid said, you don't have to be here. You don't have to come to Dawsonville. The fire of the Lord can come upon you right where you are. I want to pray for you right now. Oh, in fact, before I pray, put your hand on the part of your body that is hurting wherever you're struggling. It may be emotional issues. It may be arthritic issues. It may be a cancer in your body. But as I pray, I'm believing that the presence of Jesus is going to fill your room and he's going to heal your body supernaturally. So Jesus, I thank you right now now that you're releasing your healing power, the anointing into homes all over the world. I thank you, Lord, right now that cancer is being annihilated. Those cells in people's bodies, Lord, they are literally dying at the root. We release your healing power. We release, Lord, the strength and might of God into their lives. We thank you that you're right now taking care, Father, of tumors that are shrinking in people's bodies on their side. And I see one right now on their neck that is shrinking in Jesus' name. I believe right now, Father, that your kingdom is being released all across this world and moving supernaturally unprecedented miracles in their lives right now. Lord, pray we thank you. Fire. Father, I pray also for the fire of the Holy Spirit. Many of you need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit right now. Pray this after me. Say, Jesus, Jesus, fill me, fill me with the Holy Spirit and fire. With the Holy Spirit and fire. Come upon me now. Come upon me now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen.